Hello and welcome to Fast and Nature's Field Guide series. Today we're going to be discussing 10 facts about a fan favorite and one of my favorites, the wood turtle. Stay tuned in until the end of the video where I promise to share a fascinating fact about the wood turtle that involves sex. As always, if you like what you're seeing and hearing, please give the video a like, subscribe, and ring the bell for many more videos to come. Okay, so let's dive right in with fact number one. I love to go over the etymology of names, and the name for the wood turtle is Glypcamius inscelpta. Of course, you could just say Glyptimus inscelpta. I found that if you say a binomial name competently enough, nobody's going to argue with you. All right, so let's give that name one more shot. Glyptamius and Sculpta. Glyp is Greek for meaning carved, and emius is Greek for turtle. And Sculpta is derived from the Latin word Sculptus, which means engraved. Now, if you look at the carapace of a wood turtle, which is the top of the shell, you're gonna see where these names came from. This is going to lead us into fact number two, and we're just gonna call this confusing species. They do share a genus with the bog turtle, which is actually a federally threatened turtle. Bog turtle's binomial name is Glyptemius muhlenbergii. Bog turtles are much smaller and for lack of a better term, don't have that wood look to their carapace. They also have an orange splotch on the side of their head. Just check the photo I'm about to post now. There aren't too many other turtles that the wood turtle can be confused with, but I guess it's worth noting that box turtles and snapping turtles can be found terrestrially like the wood turtle. Box turtles are very colorful and have a high domed carapace, whereas snapping turtles are missing color altogether. Okay, for fact number three, I'm going to give you a field guide version of its description. Wood turtles can grow to between five and a half and eight inches in straight carapace length. So that doesn't count the head or the tail. And they can reach a maximum of 9.2 inches. They have a rough carapace, again, that's the top of the shell, that is a tan grayish brown or brown color with a central ridge called a keel, made up of a pyramid type pattern of ridges and grooves. Older turtles typically display an abraded or worn carapace this is pretty typical with all turtles. It'll be worn down and smoother than the uh, engraved version that you know wood turtles to be. Fully grown, they can weigh up to 35 ounces. The larger scutes display a pattern of black or yellow lines. The plastron, which is the bottom of the shell, is yellowish in color and has dark patches. The posterior margin of the plastron terminates in a V-shaped notch, that's by the tail. Although sometimes speckled with yellowish spots, the upper surface of the head is often a dark gray to solid black. You can just check out the uh, photos I'm gonna be posting for a bunch of different variations. The ventral surfaces of the neck, chin, and legs are orange to red with faint yellow stripes along the lower jaw of some individuals. Seasonal variation in color vibrancy has been known to occur, especially during breeding season. What that basically means is the males tend to be brighter in breeding season. That happens along a lot of animals. As with a lot of turtles, the plastrons of the males are concave as they get older, whereas the females remain flat. Fact number four, distribution. The wood turtle is a decidedly northern species. It's found in most New England states, Nova Scotia, west to Michigan, northern Indiana and Minnesota, and south to the top parts of Virginia. One thing I found pretty cool back in the day was that wood turtles populations were forced south by extending glaciers. This is back from 300,000 to 11,000 years ago. Remains and fossils have been found in Georgia and Tennessee, which if you looked at the map is pretty far south of its current northern range. Fact number five, habitat. Most turtles prefer either a terrestrial existence or an aquatic existence. For terrestrial, we're gonna think like tortoises or box turtles, for example. Aquatic is mainly most of the turtles, your slider type turtles, musk mud turtles, snapping turtles, etc. What separates a wood turtle is they split their time pretty evenly between the two. First, they'll hibernate and spend most of their time in the early spring and late fall in a variety of creeks, rivers, or streams. The constant here is that the water is always flowing. 
They tend to like slower moving streams, however, preferring secondary streams or the slower parts of higher velocity creeks or rivers. Once things warm up though, they move into open meadows, bogs, deciduous and coniferous forests, and old fields. One detailed study in Pennsylvania even showed they spent a lot of time in cornfields. There's going to be more on this in Fact 6. One thing I would like to point out that's apparently not true because I used to believe it to be so, is that once the wood turtles leave their creek after hibernation and early spring, they don't spend the entirety of their summer terrestrially. They will go back into the creek often and spend their time split between the two. This further solidifies their ranking as the most split turtle species as far as aquatic and terrestrial existence, separating them from the pack. This leads us into fact six, conservation. This is absolutely the most important fact of this entire video. Of course, habitat loss is always going to be a conservation issue for all the herp species and all of the wildlife species we discuss. Us humans have a knack for destroying the animals' homes with our bulldozers and Walmarts. Secondly, road mortality is always going to be an issue with turtles, especially the females as they wander around looking for proper nesting spots. I'd like to take a moment to uh, discuss what happens when you see a turtle on the road. A lot of people make the mistake of moving a turtle to a more suitable location. This isn't the case. What you want to do is take the turtle and move it right across the road in the direction he or she, she mostly, was heading. You can of course take her a few meters off the road, but always in the exact spot you found them across in the direction they were heading. Next, cornfields seem to be a problem for wood turtles. As I discussed in the last fact, they tend to enjoy hanging out in cornfields and are often the victim of agricultural accidents. And lastly, I'm going to discuss this as frankly and bluntly as possible. I followed this fact up after their distribution and habitat preferences because the information I shared here is nothing you can't find on a million different websites or in books. But poaching is one of the largest problems with the conservation of these wood turtles. They are a highly, highly sought after and collected species for the pet trade and for the food trade overseas. I want to implore that if you know of a wood turtle population, that you please, please, please keep it a secret. One of my best spots, you can go and find 10 wood turtles on a spring day in an hour. If a collector gets wind of that, your population will be wiped out in one morning. Please keep your wood turtle populations a secret and help in the conservation of the species. Okay, let's leave that somber tone and move on to fact number seven, which is the diet. Little is actually known about the specific diet of wood turtles. They are opportunistic omnivores and have been observed feeding on a variety of items in the wild. During the spring, they feed on the leaves and flowers of wild strawberries, and later in the year, they eat the fruits of strawberries, blackberries, wild raspberries, basically whatever they can find. They're also found to eat mushrooms, earthworms, snails, insects, and a variety of dead animals and carry on. Fact number eight, another awesome reason to love wood turtles. We're gonna call this homing ability, but I'm gonna include a few things here. The wood turtle, it's an intelligent animal, has homing capabilities, and its mental capacity for directional movement was discovered after the completion of an experiment that involved an individual finding food in a maze. The results prove that these turtles have locating abilities similar to that of a rat. This was also proved by another separate experiment. One male wood turtle was displaced one and a half miles after being captured, and within five weeks it returned to the original location. This was taken from a book by Ernst, The Turtles of the United States and Canada. Fact number nine, natural threats. So what eats a wood turtle? Snapping turtles, raccoons, otters, foxes, feral cats, even common ravens and coyotes are all known to destroy the unhatched eggs and prey upon hatchlings and juveniles. The adults are pretty safe for the most part. We often find leech infestations on turtles in the spring. 
Here I'm only finding one leech on this wood turtle, but in studies they've found as many as 39 adult leeches on a single turtle. And get this, this is pretty gross. Gravid leeches often attach to turtles during the fall and brood their eggs on the turtle over the winter. It's not unusual in the spring to find turtles with clusters of 50 or more baby leeches. I'm pretty happy I only found one. And finally, fact 10, reproduction. The secret or not so secret life of the wood turtle. Mating is based on a competitive hierarchy where higher ranked males gain the majority of mates in the population. You'd think it was due to size, but it's actually more about aggression. The more aggressive males win the battle for the females. The wood turtle usually mates in the water and rarely on land. Surprisingly for me though, the only mating I've ever encountered happened to be the rarer of the two when we found two wood turtles on land. Sexual maturity isn't reached until between 14 and 18 years old. Now think about this for a minute. Think about this in regards to conservation. If one adult wood turtle is hit on a road or one adult wood turtle is taken out of a population, it's going to take 14 to 18 years for another juvenile turtle to take its place in the reproductive population of that. Here's where it really gets interesting. The females mate with multiple males to ensure all of the eggs in her clutch are fertilized. And yes, this often results in multiple paternity in her offspring. That means there's more than one dad, guys. This is pretty common in freshwater turtles, but here's something that's not. Wood turtles are the only turtle species to be observed having same-sex intercourse. And now you know. That about wraps it up for the wood turtle. I could go on probably for days with this fascinating species, but we gotta end this video somewhere. So if you like what you heard and you've seen, please remember to give it a like, subscribe, and ring the bell, and tell me in the comments what you would like to see next. Have a good one, and step into the outdoors.